Defending Liberty, one hour at a time, and broadcasting live from the RWB Network Studios in New York City, this is the Rhino Report. Always right. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Uh, I've now been in 57 states. I think one left to go. We are going to raise taxes on the middle class. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. You are very rude. We are going to make America great again. USA! 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 It's all Americans. Let's roll. And now, here's your host, the Rhino. The new sheriff now. Hello, hello, hello. I am the Rhino, and this is my report today, Wednesday, September 21st, 2016. We're coming to you from the RWB Network Studios in New York and live on CRN Digital Talk Radio. So if you have a child that goes to school at the Wylandville Elementary School in Cannonsburg, PA, and they buy lunch there, you might want to make sure your finances are in order. Because if you go $25 in debt with the school lunch, they take the food away from your child. Yeah, this happens. One lunch lady, she quit over it. She had to go take a hot meal away from a child whose parents were $25 and one cent in debt to the school and they replace it with i don't know bread and water or something but if you're over the age of 11 or 10 sixth grade whatever it is they don't give you anything you don't get a hot meal you don't get a sandwich nothing so make sure you don't go in debt there or no soup for you all right today's headlines first what do waldo and hillary have in common no one can find either one hillary skips a $100,000 per plate fundraiser in North Carolina, and her campaign refuses to comment on it. Unfortunately for them, commenting is something I'm pretty good at. Also, we have more information about Ahmad Rahami's premeditation and his odd fascination with backflipping felines. And does this sicko have something in common with Teddy Roosevelt? I bet I got your attention there. And a totally justified police shooting occurs in Charlotte, North Carolina, just hours before a totally unjustified riot breaks out in that same city. We'll separate fact from social media, Black Lives Matter fiction, and tell you what these rioters might have planned next. All that, plus Reuters Ipsos has released their weekly poll, and something tells me they'll be changing that formulation model for next week. Also... NFL TV ratings are dropping faster than Colin Kaepernick can take a knee. And why was one public school teacher in North Carolina trampling the American flag in front of his horrified students? We have a lot to get to today, guys. But first, let's kick the show off the same way we always do. With a salute to our country with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Check out rhinoreport.com. RhinoReport.com, sign up for the newsletter, check out Robert's new article. It's part three in a series about the dire state of our education system. You gotta read this part three. Also, follow me on Twitter at Rhino on Air. At Rhino on Air. And on Facebook, Facebook.com slash the Rhino Report. Remember, you can write for the website. If you got something you want to say and you want three to five hundred people a day to read it. You can write for the show. Send me your article, rhino, R-Y-N-O, at rwbnetwork.com. We'll get you published. It's going to be one of those days, guys. I just realized we have a lot of North Carolina stories today. So if you live there, if you live in North Carolina, maybe it's time to back up and move south. We'll be back here on the Rhino Report. So you've missed the health care deadline and don't have any form of health care? Liberty HealthShare has the answer. Liberty HealthShare offers an affordable health care option that allows Americans to enroll any time of the year. For those of you who have already enrolled but just aren't satisfied with what you've chosen, there's still hope. Liberty HealthShare allows Americans to control, manage, and direct their health care, yet still be in good standing with the Affordable Care Act. Members are exempt from the tax penalty and mandates imposed on individuals for not having health care insurance, 
thus giving you freedom from insurance. Liberty HealthShare empowers their members by giving them the ability to choose any doctor or hospital across the nation. Memberships are for individuals, couples, and families, offering a variety of options to best suit an individual's medical needs. If you're a freedom-loving American like myself, looking for contract-free health care, then this is for you. For more information on how to enroll at any time of the year, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org to request a free estimate. Do it today. All right, guys, welcome back to this Wednesday edition of the Rhino Report. Got to get a little housekeeping out of the way here. You can find the show on all your favorite podcasting sites, iTunes, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher, Podbean, and iHeartRadio. You can hear us live on Red Nation Rising Radio on the Liberty Feed, Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, and also live Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern on StreamingTalkRadio.com. We're new there. We're happy to be there. So welcome to all you listeners. And, of course, KLRNRadio.com at midnight Eastern, Monday to Friday. Well, I guess Tuesday to Saturday, if we're getting specific there. So I'm looking for something a little light today to talk about. It's been a long campaign season. And then... We have these bombings in Seaside Park, New Jersey, and in, 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 the, in the Chelsea district of Manhattan. And for a lot of us, this conjures up these old memories of whether it be the first bombing at the World Trade Center in the early 90s or, of course, 9-11. It just, it's been like that kind of week, right? I mean, we need something light, something light to talk about, at least for a little, uh, just a little bit. I'm thinking maybe we can find a story about... Some creepy clowns or or maybe some dopey thing that Kim Jong-un said. Something light. And then, as if sent from above, my phone dings. And the notification says, Anthony Weiner. And already I'm interested. I see Anthony Weiner and you have my attention. Gets caught texting or sexting a 15-year-old girl. Well, how's that for levity? Anthony Weiner, let me be the first to introduce you to Jared Fogle. All right? You guys might have something in common. Is this ridiculous? What is this? It's been three weeks? Has it, been even, has it even been that long since his last sexting scandal? Carlos Dan- Danger, keep your snake in its cage. Now, I've read all the articles. Whether it was the Daily Mail who broke the story or everyone else that's, that, that, that's been picking it up since then. It does sound a little bit. Now, I'm not letting this guy off the hook, but it does sound a little bit like he may have been drawn into this. Now, he should have resisted, he should have resisted and said, no, I can't talk to you. You're 15. Instead, he says, hey, put on a schoolgirl outfit or something. I mean, there are some really racy messages here that I can't say. I can't even say them. I guess she contacted him and... Uh, his Twitter was open to receive direct messages from anybody, go figure, and um, said she was interested in, in all his past scandals and she's writing a book about him and, you know, maybe she was a bit more provocative. But this guy is 50 years old. You're 50 years old. I mean, she's 35 years younger than you. Not to mention she can't drive, she can't vote, she can't do anything. She's illegal. <laughs> Even in the most liberal states... 15 is illegal. But no, he he acquiesces and he goes along with this. And I guess he didn't send any nude pictures, but uh, a bunch of, you know, this guy likes being photographed in his boxers. If, if he had a, or his boxer briefs or whatever it is he wears. If this guy had any better of a track record, he could work for Calvin Klein. I mean, he's, he's in his underwear. He's photographed his underwear more than anybody else on the planet, probably. And this is only a couple weeks after Uma Danger left him for that last little sexting scandal he had. It's getting to be a little ridiculous with this guy. Huh? Maybe he has a problem. I mean, not maybe. He has a problem. <laughs> it's definitely a problem here. But uh, this, I mean, everyone's phone was going off. And I think it took about 45 seconds to start trending on Twitter. That's, I mean, it's. I thought it was a joke. I literally thought it was a joke. So who knows if they're going to arrest him or, or what's happening. She, um, 
you know, she went to the Daily Mail. She kind of said to them, hey, listen, this is what's going on. You know, she probably did bait him in a little bit, but he has to say no. You have to say no. You're a 50-year-old man. But it is worth noting. It is worth noting that, that Anthony Weiner, a.k.a. Carlos Jr., is a Democrat. He's a Democrat, so worth noting that. But yeah, looking for levity, and we got it there. Carlos Danger strikes again. It is not safe to go back on Twitter, that's for sure. <laughs> Stay away. Oh, man. All right. Speaking of crazy Democrats, Hillary's campaign manager, this guy, Robbie Mook. I mean, terrible. Absolutely terrible campaign manager. He's on this Morning Joe show this morning, this MSNBC disaster, right, with Scarborough. And um, they're asking him questions. And they asked him about Brangelina and asking him about Trump. And he, Trump has no plan. Trump has no plan. He's got no plan. We got a good plan. All right, so Scarborough goes, fine. What's the plan? And Mook says, if you're asking about new policy questions, you're going to have to ask her. Well, isn't your job to kind of talk for her? I mean, because she's so busy now. No one knows where she is, but she must be very, very bu- I mean, too busy to show up for a $100,000 a plate fundraiser. So you should know the company line, right, Mr. Mook? So Scarborough kind of says, listen, I'm not trying to be difficult, but can you answer the question? Like, what kind of policies, what kind of details does Hillary have on her policies? And he just, he, he doesn't answer. So then he says to him, do you actually, like, represent her views? Do you speak for her? And he goes, yeah, I do. So then someone else says, if you're going to say that Donald Trump won't tell us what his policy is, but you're here saying that you won't tell us what Hillary Clinton's policy is, how can you expect anybody to vote for Hillary? Now, they didn't say it quite that way. I'm paraphrasing. They said it in a much nicer way. But the bottom line is Robbie Mook, Hillary Clinton, Uma Abedin, Cheryl Mills, Jake Sullivan, whoever it may be, Bill Clinton, they cannot talk about Hillary Clinton's policies because she really has none. The only policy she has is to bring in a ton of refugees. That's the only policy. They have to resort to ad hominem attacks on Donald Trump. We've seen it, I mean, really since, what, since May, or I guess June, since Donald Trump was the presumptive nominee. We have to get our vernacular right. You can't say the wrong thing. He was the presumptive nominee. And she had the attack ads going already because she was the presumptive queen eight years ago. So she had these ads ready to go. All these attack ads on Trump. Have you seen any ad from Hillary Clinton that actually describes what she wants to do? She says, I want to help the people. Help the people. The work. How? How, how, how? I'm I'm listening. We're all listening with bated breath. How are you going to do any of this? The answer, in short, will be, and we'll probably learn it Monday, raise taxes. That's the answer in short. If you want a government to do anything for you, the answer is to raise taxes. But until then, we're just going to attack Trump. And Trump has to be mindful of this, because this is what's going to happen on Monday at that debate at Hofstra University here in New York. She is going to come at him, and he's going to have to just be stoic, stand there, no faces, no rolling the eyes, nothing. Turn to her and say, Hillary, I'm not here to make fun of you. I'm here to make America great again and solve problems. They have to have him rehearse this. This has to be the answer. Because she's going to come at him because she has nothing. Nothing. She wants to bring in 100,000 refugees. That's worked out so well so far. All right, we come back. We'll finish up on this topic. We'll talk about what's going on in Charlotte. And uh, we got more information about this guy in Elizabeth, New Jersey. We'll be back. 
Come to Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante in Fullerton, California for authentic family-style Italian dinners. Come to Angelo's and Vinci's and celebrate your party or event in one of our festive banquet rooms. Angelo's and Vinci's, Fullerton, California, 550 North Harbor Boulevard. Named the Orange County Hot List Top 5 Italian Restaurant for seven years in a row. And a Top 10 Pizza Restaurant by Gale, featuring traditional and award-winning pizzas. Offering Sunday champagne brunch from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., just $16.95. Choose from over 20 items plus create your own personal omelet. Delicious lunches, including our express lunch buffet, eight ninety five dollars with over 15 items. And dinner seven days a week. Getting married? Angelo's and Vinci's won this year's Wedding Wire Couples Choice Award. You can talk to our experienced staff of wedding coordinators. We treat you as guests at your own wedding reception. It's all at Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante at 550 North Harbor Boulevard in Fullerton, California. Call 714-879-4022. 714-879-4022. Trying to sell your old car? Instead, donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind. Pickup is free, and your donation is tax-deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats, whether they run or not. Call right now and receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call 1-800-785-9618. Donate your car today. That's 1-800-785-9618. Federal tax fraud is set to hit $21 billion by 2016, up from just $6.5 billion two years ago. TransUnion just announced the launch of its Government Information Solutions Division to provide fraud, identity authentication, data breach response, and investigation services to help government agencies manage risk and reduce costs. Jonathan McDonald, Executive Vice President of TransUnion's Government Information Solutions Business Unit. TransUnion's proprietary sets of credit, criminal, and public data, coupled with flexible analytics, help government agencies make informed decisions and ensure citizen safety. Federal spending has skyrocketed, and government agencies are making significant investments to protect data entrusted to them. TransUnion is well positioned to help government agencies identify fraudulent activities, detect when they are occurring, and investigate, prosecute, and prevent them from happening again. For more, visit TransUnion's government blog feed or transunion.com slash government. Hi, this is Fred Dreyer. Join me and Michael Horn on the PM Show Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern here on CRN Digital Talk. We talk about things in the sports world nobody else does. So listen in to me and Mike at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on CRN Digital Talk. And go to crntalk.com for more information on other show times. And don't forget to take us with you by downloading the CRN app on the App Store. Alright guys, welcome back to today's Wednesday edition of the Rhino Report. So we're talking sort of about this debate. We're a little off topic. We're talking about next Monday and the debate between Hillary and, and Donald Trump. And he's got to just stay stoic. He has to be stone-faced. He can't, you know what, I hate to say it, but for for 90 minutes he just can't be a New Yorker. I know it's hard to say, it's hard for me to say. Because the, my first reaction would be to go after her. But everybody's expecting that from him. He has to give them the presidential Donald Trump because there's going to be the name calling and there's going to be the gotcha questions from the moderators. Those are two things you can bank on. She is going to try to get under his skin. Now, I hope his game plan isn't, well, let me get under her skin. Let's get her riled up and hope she passes out. Like, that's not a good game plan. While I'm sure that would make for great TV... That's not a good game plan. What he needs to do is just pay the maintenance guy at Hofstra to raise the thermostat to 79 degrees. Then we know she can't handle it. Right? Like if she wins, who's going to be the president when it's 80 degrees outside? I mean, raise the thermostat, and that should be all it is. But no, he has to just just take it. Just take it on the chin and fire back with your policies. I'm not here to name call. I'm here to solve problems. That's it. That's it. That's what the people need to see. Donald Trump has been doing very well since he kind of just, listen, he got on prompter. He got on a message. He's kind of boring now, but he's been doing really well since he started to do that. The other big question is, will Hillary show up to this debate? Right? Will she? I mean, Lester Holt, it couldn't be any easier. Couldn't be any easier. It's, it's like hitting off a tee for her. 
And then the next one you have, what, Martha Raddatz and Anderson Cooper? Like, <laughs> come on. This is hitting off a tee for Hillary. But where is she? Is she going to show up? She's taking off Thursday and Friday this week. She was kind of a no-show yesterday. I mean, she did have that really big 175-person rally. I think it was Monday <laughs> at Temple University. I mean, she's drawn dozens of people. Dozens of people are showing up for her. But last night, she was supposed to be at a fundraiser or like a, a luncheon or something. I guess it was yesterday afternoon. $2,700 to $100,000 to show up to this thing. She couldn't show up to sign the back of checks. When you can't show up to sign the back of the check, something is really, really wrong. Is she that sick? Is there something else going on? I don't know. Transparency will not be the Hillary Clinton administration strong suit. That much I can say. We don't know where she is. We were told she was in the uh, in New York City yesterday meeting with leaders from around the world to show how presidential she is because they're all in town for the General Assembly. No, no. She was meeting with them to hit them up for money. That's what she was doing, if she was even there. I think we saw one little clip of her sitting with, like, the, I don't know, the Thailand prime minister or something. I don't even know who it was. She's sitting there. She, she couldn't look more uncomfortable. And they were dressed kind of similar, to be honest with you. But she couldn't look more uncomfortable. The guy's, like, nodding his head. I don't think he knows what she's saying. Talking about they have to work together and, I don't know, we're all one world government or whatever the heck she was saying. But if she was there, she was there only to raise money. But she couldn't make it to North Carolina yesterday. This is going to be at the home of Betty Craven and Michael Warner. For those of you who know who those people are, it was going to be in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And yeah, she's taking off. She's taking off Thursday, and I mean, how many days off do you need? This should be the time of your life when you are never working for something so hard in your life than to be president of the United States of America, and she's taken like 30 out of the last 38 days off. And then I guess she has a, a rally scheduled for today in Orlando. Orlando. So we'll see if she shows up to that. People think maybe she's in Chappaqua. I don't know where she is. It's hard to tell now because she has a big wall around her house in Chappaqua now. She has a big wall. Walls don't work, but we'll put them around our house. So no one can tell if she's there or not. So does she show up to Hofstra University on, on Monday? Who knows? Who knows? I tell you something. You gotta be, you gotta be pretty sick though to not show up for a fundraiser. She takes more days off than Barack Obama does. Lots of days off. All right. When we come back, I do want to talk about what is going on in Charlotte. This is, um, this is getting to be too much. Getting to be way too much because it was social media that spun this completely out of control. Have we relapsed as a society so far that social media, we look to that for any sort of factual information? I mean, I know I only use it to put quippy little stupid things out there. Are people reading what I'm saying and taking it seriously? That concerns me. Concerns me a lot. So we'll talk about what's going on in Charlotte, and then we'll talk about some videos that show... The New York, New Jersey terrorist blowing some stuff up in his backyard. We've got a new Reuters poll to talk about, and we'll talk about maybe Fox's new electoral map. It may be getting a little tinge of red around the coast. We'll be back. So you've missed the health care deadline and don't have any form of health care? Liberty HealthShare has the answer. Liberty HealthShare offers an affordable health care option that allows Americans to enroll any time of the year. For those of you who have already enrolled but just aren't satisfied with what you've chosen, there's still hope. Liberty HealthShare allows Americans to control, manage, and direct their health care, yet still be in good standing with the Affordable Care Act. Members are exempt from the tax penalty and mandates imposed on individuals for not having health care insurance, thus giving you freedom from insurance. Liberty HealthShare empowers their members by giving them the ability to choose any doctor or hospital across the nation. Memberships are for individuals, couples, and families, offering a variety of options to best suit an individual's medical needs. If you're a freedom-loving American like myself, looking for contract-free health care, then this is for you. For more information on how to enroll at any time of the year, call 855-585-4237 or visit 
libertyhealthshare.org to request a free estimate. Do it today. Let me take just a moment or two, if I may, and talk about a great place to eat. That's right. For you folks anywhere in the eastern San Fernando Valley, drop in to Bob's Big Boys. That's right. In Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. Now, everybody remembers the name Bob's. They're getting bigger and bigger every day. And little old Bob carrying the hamburger in his checkered overalls is the same Bob that you remember from back through the years. And, of course, if you want to go in for a great lunch, remember their classic burger, the original double-deck hamburger combination. Delicious 100% pure ground beef in two patties with American cheese, lettuce, and our famous big boy special sauce. The name is Bob, and I think when you go in, you'll say, by golly, I'm sure glad that I found this restaurant because it's good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They've got all kinds of things, and all you have to do is remember. Bob's Big Boy in Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. It's a great place to eat. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help, you can always get fast help and fast answers. So on your next trip, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, how about right now? Pick up your phone and call SmartFares, plus save up to 75% on your plane reservation. So call right now. 800 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. Turn down that radio. If this sounds familiar, you know it's time to address your hearing loss. But custom hearing aids can cost as much as $5,000 each and are not covered by Medicare. The good news is MD Hearing Aid offers medical-grade, FDA-registered hearing aids for savings of up to 90% over traditional hearing aids. MD Hearing Aid was founded by a Chicago surgeon determined to develop a hearing aid that was technologically advanced, simple to use, and most of all, affordable. Call 1-800-511-8384. You'll speak with a trained MD hearing aid professional who will match you with the best hearing aid for your needs. Over 100,000 satisfied customers have already made the call. Call right now for our exclusive 45-day risk-free trial and get free shipping and a year's worth of free batteries, a $50 value. But you have to call right now. Call MD Hearing Aid at 1-800-511-8384. That's 1-800-511-8384. All right, guys, welcome back to this Wednesday, this hump day edition of the Rhino Report. So we're talking about Hillary. Where's Hillary? No one knows where she is. She's supposed to be in Orlando. She misses this fundraiser last night, which is really concerning because Democrats love fundraisers. That's like the thing they love the most. It's their jam. So, and I was wondering if we could get Hillary to wear like a, like a red and white striped muumuu. She'd look like Waldo, right? Put a little sock hat on her head. I'd prefer to see her wearing black and white stripes, personally. Horizontal, with a, with one of those leg irons and waist chains. But I'll settle for a, for a red and white stripe muumuu at this point. All right, so let's talk about what's going on in Charlotte. This is, this is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. You have cops that show up to an apartment complex trying to serve a warrant. They happen to see somebody getting out of a car is not the person they're trying to serve the warrant to, by the way. The person getting out of the car has a gun. The cops turn their attention to this person. They give him clear, loud, verbal commands, according to Police Chief Kurt Putney, to drop the weapon. He does not. He turns with the weapon. They shoot him. That's it. All right? This is very, very cut and dry. Very cut and dry. When a, when a police officer tells you loudly and clearly, and they give you a command, that's called a lawful order. All right? A lawful order is when a police officer or a probation officer or a corrections officer, whatever it may be, who's in charge of that particular jurisdiction at that particular moment, who is sworn to protect it, 
gives you a directive, it's called a lawful order. If you do not comply with the lawful order, then things may have to get physical. If you choose to have a gun and turn around or point it at a police officer, at that point you have chosen to end your life. That's how this works. Irrespective of the fact that you may think you don't have to listen, you still have to. It's irrelevant that you think you shouldn't have to comply. Completely irrelevant. You are given, again, a lawful order. So it just so happens that Officer uh, Brentley Vinson was the cop who, who shot 43-year-old Keith Lamont Scott at that apartment complex. Just so happens Officer Vinson is a black police officer. All right. I, I, I guess that's worth noting now. I mean, it really shouldn't be. It's actually sad that we have to say that. But I guess we have to. So most people would think, okay, a cop saw a gun. The gun may have been pointed at him. They discharged their weapon, and they shot the person pointing the gun at them. That seems like a pretty open and shut thing. You have to do an investigation because, because whenever you discharge your weapon, there has to be an investigation. I get that. I understand that. But it seems pretty cut and dry. Well, when we turn to social media for our news, things are no longer so cut and dry. There's a woman who claimed to be Scott's daughter, this Keith Lamont Scott. His daughter posted an hour-long video on Facebook saying that her father didn't have a gun. He had a book. Just had a book. That's all he had. So people went nuts. Now, I don't understand how people will take the time to watch an hour-long Facebook video and not watch a 23-minute newscast, which would have told them this was a gun. I don't know why people choose to do that. I mean, after all, looking on your phone, it's, it's what, 25 times smaller than your TV. You'd think the TV would be more comfortable. But they said he had a book. Well... The police chief says no book was found, a firearm was found. This, it, it seems very cut and dry, but things start erupting in Charlotte last night. They're blocking the interstate, which I don't get. I don't get that. What if you have a guy in a truck who doesn't want to stop? Why would you stand on the interstate? Well, they start looting the back of trucks and they're burning stuff. A Walmart got looted. I just don't understand. The facts are right there. The mayor told you the facts, who, by the way, is a Democrat. The police chief told you the facts. Nobody saw a book. All of the witnesses, according to statements, heard the lawful order, the directive from Officer Vincent. Yet, we're still rioting. And now... There are videos out there, some of them are on Twitter, some of them are on Facebook, some are even hitting the news cycle now, saying that we're no longer going to riot in our own areas, we're going to take it to the wealthy suburbs. That's a game changer. It's a game changer. This shouldn't happen to begin with. This should never have happened to begin with. But it did. And the police and the mayor are doing their best job to try to keep this thing calm. There is no racial injustice here. There's none. The guy had a gun. And the cop feared for their life or the people around them. This person did not follow a directive. And that cop did what they had to do. Some of these supporters of BLM and these other SJW groups, they think that cops enjoy this. Police officers just enjoy going around shooting people. That's really what their distorted little brains think. That's not true. It's the hardest thing you would ever have to do in your life is take somebody else's. That seems to them to be this big injustice. That cops are tasked with keeping us safe and sometimes that means making a really, really hard decision. They're not too concerned about Chicago. What is it, 4,000 people killed in the last eight years in Chicago, mostly black-on-black -black crime? They're not concerned about that. They're concerned about this, about these narratives that start going around on social media and Facebook and Twitter. There was no book, guys. He had a gun. He had a gun. Cop told him to drop it, told him to get out of the car, felt threatened. That's it. 
That's it. You have to learn that you need to respect law enforcement. When they give you a directive, when they give you a lawful order, you know what? You just comply. It doesn't have to end in violence. It doesn't have to end this way. But when you refuse, then sometimes it does. Maybe it's the parents that are failing. Maybe parents aren't telling their children. When a cop approaches you, you don't run away. You don't point a gun at them. You don't reach for, reach for your waistband. Where are the parents made? Maybe that's the issue. I wasn't raised to talk back to a cop. I wasn't raised. I, I just, I wasn't. I don't know who is. It's ridiculous. They're rioting for absolutely no reason. But social media takes over, and the social media warriors are calling for this fight to be taken to the suburbs. I don't know, guys. It's not good. We'll keep talking about this when we get back. Stay healthy from head to wallet with Wellness Plus with Plenty at Rite Aid. You can earn Plenty points on hundreds of specially marked products each week on your favorite brands. Every 100 Plenty points equals a dollar off your next purchase. Sign up today in store or online at RiteAid.com. And that's just one of the four ways to save. Now through September 24th, spend $50 a week on participating products at Rite Aid and earn 2,000 Plenty points worth $20 in savings. Visit RiteAid.com slash points for details. Life can be unpredictable. That's why you should take control of your family's future now with an estate plan bundle from LegalZoom. Not sure whether you need a last will or a living trust? LegalZoom's network of independent attorneys in 48 states can help you decide which one's right for you without billing by the hour since LegalZoom isn't a law firm. Plus, updating your estate plan as your family and assets grow couldn't be easier. Enjoy your life. Use LegalZoom for the legal stuff. LegalZoom. Legal help is here. Come to Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante in Fullerton, California for authentic family-style Italian dinners. Come to Angelo's and Vinci's and celebrate your party or event in one of our festive banquet rooms. Angelo's and Vinci's, Fullerton, California, 550 North Harbor Boulevard. Named the Orange County Hot List Top 5 Italian Restaurant for seven years in a row. And a Top 10 Pizza Restaurant by Gale, featuring traditional and award-winning pizzas. Offering Sunday champagne brunch from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., just $16.95. Choose from over 20 items plus great your own personal omelet. Delicious lunches, including our express lunch buffet, eight ninety five with over fifteen items, and dinner seven days a week. Getting married? Angels and Vinci's won this year's Wedding Wire Couples Choice Award. You can talk to our experienced staff of wedding coordinators. We treat you as guests at your own wedding reception. It's all at Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante at 550 North Harbor Boulevard in Fullerton, California. Call 714 879 4022. 714 879 4022. guys welcome back to the rhino report we're talking about charlotte and talking about what happened down there and the the shooting of 43 year old keith lamont scott who the alphabets and cnn and msnbc cannot wait to call a victim can't wait love throwing around the victim word well that's kind of a liberal culture they love making victims right but they're calling him a victim now in my opinion and this is solely my opinion. If you brandish a weapon towards a police officer, you no longer get to be called a victim. You're just not. Now, if you use that weapon and you rob somebody, the person you rob, they're a victim. The police officer, he may become a victim now because his name's been released, which I would have withheld for a little while at least. A little while. But if you're going to point a gun at a cop, you are not a victim. You are choosing at that moment in time to end your life. That's what happens. Now, the police even performed CPR on him, tried to revive him, called for medical assistance. Do you think they wanted to shoot him? If they wanted to shoot him, they wouldn't have done any of that stuff afterwards. They would have let him sit there or lay there. But they didn't. They don't want to have to do that. If you think police want to kill people, you have a totally, totally misguided view of life. Totally misguided. Somewhere you went wrong. You went way wrong. Now, you have 16 officers have sustained injuries due to these riots, but only one person's been arrested. I don't think one person injured 16 people. I mean, do the math. So, are the police giving them space to riot? I don't really think so, but the mayor, Jennifer Roberts, she says the community deserves answers. 
That's sort of an odd statement to me. Because the answer is, if you obey the officer, this doesn't happen. If he just got out of his car, left a weapon on his seat, said, Officer, I have a weapon on the seat. My hands are in the air. This would have never happened. Just obey the lawful order. It's not okay to just walk away or disobey because you feel you you don't deserve to be approached by an officer. That's not okay. You were raised wrong if you think that's fine. It's not okay. Whether you think you're innocent or not, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Cop gives you a directive, you listen. End of story. So we'll see how this plays out tonight. Hopefully, enough people have heard the truth, the facts surrounding the case, and this rioting comes to an end. There's no need for it. Nobody has to get hurt. No one has to get arrested. Nobody has anything. It can all end tonight. So we'll keep our eye on it. I'm sure every single media outlet out there will be out there with cameras. And we'll see all the usual suspects trying to interview people and everything else. So hopefully it ends. All right. Um, just quickly, we had this video from this, uh, this Rahami guy, this New York, New Jersey bomber, of him trying to set off some stuff just a couple of days before. Uh, there was He set off some kind of a, whatever it was, munition or bomb in the ground. There was some billowing smoke. There was laughter. This guy had had uh, just, I mean, all sorts of weird stuff on his social media. He carried a journal with him that pretty much had this, this big disdain for our country, huge disdain for our country, um, written, oh, you know, we're all going to pay the price. And, I mean, I have all the quotes here, but uh, death to your oppression. And he's talking about pipe bombs and pressure cooker bombs. And he praises Nadal. Hassan, of course, the shooter at Fort Hood in 2009. He praises bin Laden. This guy's a real whack job. And um, he has jihadi fight videos, like, saved on his YouTube or something. Now, the first rule of jihadi fight club is you don't talk about jihadi fight club, right? I had to get that in there. All right. So, hey, listen, this guy's a weirdo. He bought all of his stuff on eBay. eBay comes out and says, oh, it's all legal. It's uh, citric acid and ball bearings and electric uh, igniters. All stuff is legal. And it just shows us that we have to really be super hyper vigilant of, of, of these people, that they are here. They are willing to hurt us. And they're very open about it. I mean, he has a journal. He's got all sorts of stuff on his computer. His father even turned him in at one point to the FBI and said, hey, I think my son might be a terrorist. And the FBI said, nope, he's all right. Didn't we see that with, like, Mateen, too? Omar Mateen in Orlando. They investigated him, like, four times, and each time was, nah, he's good, he's good. And then he goes and kills 49 people at the Pulse nightclub. FBI, not looking good lately. Just not looking good lately. But what I was reading the story about what happened, and he was shot, right? He was shot in the shootout, and his journal was pierced by the bullet. And that may have saved his life. So automatically I'm thinking, hold on. This happened to Teddy Roosevelt too. Now we shouldn't draw any connections between Rahami and Teddy Roosevelt. But Teddy Roosevelt was shot while making a speech on October 14th of 1912. And the, the bullet, it, was, he, it saved his life. It hit his glasses case and a manuscript that was all bloody and stuff. And that was when he said his famous line there, it takes more than a bullet to kill a bull moose. Now, the person trying to kill him was trying to shoot him because he says anyone who runs for a third term should get shot. So, I mean, we're drawing very loose loose connections here. But it just reminded me that this bullet that the, that, that Mahani got shot with had to go through his journal first, and that probably saved his life. All right. We do have a Reuters Ipsos poll to talk about. We have these NFL ratings. They are tanking, tanking, tanking. And a teacher in North Carolina is trampling all over the American flag. But he says it's okay because he's just giving an example of the First Amendment. Was he? Was he or was it more? Was there more disdain there from this teacher? It just so happens to be in a community with a large military presence. 
So you want to stay tuned for this last segment coming up. we got a lot to get to. This Reuters poll, though, you guys are going to like the numbers. That much I can guarantee you. So hang in there. You're listening to The Rhino Report on CRN Digital. Talk radio defending liberty one hour at a time. Experience a luxury boutique hotel escape in the heart of Laguna Beach, California. With the finest art gallery, shopping, dining, and nightlife just steps from your door. The heart of Laguna Beach, the edge of the sea. It's the Inn at Laguna Beach. Enjoy our comfortable rooms, blending the style of a timeless beach bungalow with the modern comforts of today. 70 newly appointed guest rooms and suites await you at the Inn at Laguna Beach. Then, relax at the rooftop bar, where you'll indulge in breathtaking views of the ocean. For dining, you'll find libations and local cuisine on the California coastline, including dining at the legendary Las Brisas, a Southern California landmark. The Inn at Laguna Beach, footsteps from room to village to sea, located in the heart of Laguna Beach. The Inn is within walking distance of all that Laguna Beach has to offer. No car required. The Inn at Laguna Beach, 211 North Coast Highway in Laguna Beach, California. Call 800-544-4479 or visit innatlagunabeach.com. Let me take just a moment or two, if I may, and talk about a great place to eat. That's right. For you folks anywhere in the eastern San Fernando Valley, drop in to Bob's Big Boys. That's right. In Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. Now, everybody remembers the name Bob's. They're getting bigger and bigger every day. And little old Bob carrying the hamburger in his checkered overalls is the same Bob that you remember from back through the years. And, of course, if you want to go in for a great lunch, remember their classic burger, the original double-deck hamburger combination. Delicious 100% pure ground beef in two patties with American cheese, lettuce, and our famous big boy special sauce. The name is Bob, and I think when you go in, you'll say, by golly, I'm sure glad that I found this restaurant because it's good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They've got all kinds of things, and all you have to do is remember. Bob's Big Boy in Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. It's a great place to eat. Federal tax fraud is set to hit $21 billion by 2016, up from just $6.5 billion two years ago. TransUnion just announced the launch of its Government Information Solutions Division to provide fraud, identity authentication, data breach response, and investigation services to help government agencies manage risk and reduce costs. Jonathan McDonald, Executive Vice President of TransUnion's Government Information Solutions Business Unit. TransUnion's proprietary sets of credit, criminal, and public data, coupled with flexible analytics, help government agencies make informed decisions and ensure citizen safety. Federal spending has skyrocketed, and government agencies are making significant investments to protect data entrusted to them. TransUnion is well positioned to help government agencies identify fraudulent activities, detect when they are occurring, and investigate, prosecute, and prevent them from happening again. For more, visit TransUnion's government blog feed or transunion.com slash government. So you've missed the health care deadline and don't have any form of health care? Liberty HealthShare has the answer. Liberty HealthShare offers an affordable health care option that allows Americans to enroll any time of the year. For those of you who have already enrolled but just aren't satisfied with what you've chosen, there's still hope. Liberty HealthShare allows Americans to control, manage, and direct their health care, yet still be in good standing with the Affordable Care Act. Members are exempt from the tax penalty and mandates imposed on individuals for not having health care insurance, thus giving you freedom from insurance. Liberty HealthShare empowers their members by giving them the ability to choose any doctor or hospital across the nation. Memberships are for individuals, couples, and families offering a variety of options to best suit an individual's medical needs. If you're a freedom-loving American like myself, looking for contract-free health care, then this is for you. For more information on how to enroll at any time of the year, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org to request a free estimate. Do it today. This is Jeff Carlisi from the Band 38 Special. Let us never forget that police lives matter. You're listening to the Rhino Report, always right on the RWB Network. The Republicans want to repeal it. You know, they actually, with a straight face, say that the Great Recession was was caused by too much regulation on Wall Street. They actually say that. You know, I remember when 
You know, I, I've, been, I've supported my husband through all of his races in Arkansas. And I, I, one of my favorite, favorite political ads of all time was a radio ad, rural Arkansas, where the announcer said, wouldn't it be great if somebody running for office said something, we could have an immediate reaction as to whether it was true or not? Well, we've trained this dog. And the dog, if it's not true, he's going to bark. And then the dog was barking on the, on the radio. And so, you know, people were, like, barking at each other for days after that. I, I'm trying to figure out how we can do that with the Republicans. You know, we need, we need to get that dog and follow, follow them around. And every time they say these things, like, oh, you know, the Great Recession was caused by too much regulation. Arf, 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 you know? I, I think we could we could cut right through a lot of their uh, you know their claims. All right, guys, welcome back to this last segment of today's Wednesday show. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Rhino on Air or like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash the Rhino Report. Okay, Reuters Ipsos poll. Seventeen hundred forty nine total respondents. They interviewed 722 Democrats, 596 Republicans, so 126 more Democrats than Republicans. Only 15% of those that they polled were independent, so we're using like a 2012 hybrid model. All right, this is about what we're using right here, just so you know where we are. 67% of all those polled think we're going in the wrong direction. The plurality of Democrats think we're going in the wrong direction. A huge majority of Republicans and independents also think we are headed in the wrong direction. General economy, number one, biggest problem facing America. Number two, terrorism. Number three, unemployment. We're going quick here, guys. We're going quick. President Obama in this poll, negative, negative one net disapproval. So negative one. And independents, net negative 22 disapproval. So independents do not like King Obama. Don't like him. Likely voters, head-to-head, a tie. 39-39 all. Independents go Trump by 18% in this Reuters-Ipsos poll. When you add in the law firm of Johnson and Stein, Trump takes the lead. Plus two. This is the first time Trump has had a lead in the Reuters-Ipsos national poll since they changed the formula last July. Very much worth noting. Hillary, 80% of Democrats. Trump, 74% of Republicans. Independents go Trump in this four-way race by 23 points. In fact, he picks up independents when you add in Johnson and Stein. Hillary takes a four-point hit. He only loses one point when you add them in. Unfavorable is still not great for either candidate. Also notable in this poll that the likely voters are more likely to go with a Republican candidate for Congress. That's the first time we've seen this. It's only about one point, but that they're leaning Republican when it comes to congressional votes. Uh, no other poll is really showing that. And again, we're in like a 2012 model here. So uh, if we go to like a 2004 model, you give you give Trump 10, 12 points easy leading this poll. That's Reuters Ipsos. Also, all right. Um, NFL ratings tanking, tanking, tanking. 8.3 overnight rating. For the Eagles-Bears Monday Night Football Week 2, that is down double digits from last year. Now the NFL is saying it's not because people are boycotting or because Colin Kaepernick is a jerk. They're saying it's because Peyton Manning retired and Tom Brady is sidelined with a suspension or whatever. And you have two franchises, the Chargers and the Oakland Raiders, aren't sure where they're going to play next year. So people aren't really into it. It has nothing to do with, like, Ray Rice or Adrian Peterson or Aaron Hernandez or or <laughs> Colin Kaepernick. Nothing to do with these guys. Listen, it has everything to do. People are kind of sick of it. They're kind of sick of it. You know what? There are other things to do on Sunday. Luckily for me, I'm a bigger college fan, so I'll watch football Saturdays. I don't need to get my fill on Sundays. I'm still not watching. Still not watching. All right, lastly, this teacher in North Carolina, Lee Francis, says he's uh, he's teaching his students the First Amendment by crumpling up the American flag, stepping on it because nobody in the classroom had a lighter. Couldn't set it on fire. He says he was teaching the kids about Texas versus Johnson. 
the uh, landmark Supreme Court case there that upheld flag burning. Unfortunately, in the state of North Carolina, you can desecrate the flag, says General Statute 14-381. So he should get a Class 2 misdemeanor. And that, to me, sounds like he'd be ineligible to teach. All right, guys. Hope you had a good time today. As always, a huge thank you to those who serve our country at home and abroad. A big thank you to those in the law enforcement community. Thank you for all you do. We all depend on you. Please be safe in Charlotte tonight. A big thank you to everyone out there. God bless all of you. God bless all of your families. And until tomorrow, have a great day, everybody. I'm the Rhino, and I'm out. I'm back. Back in the New York.